Hello and welcome back. As you can see, the setup is looking a little bit different today, and this is because I have a photo shoot tomorrow. However, the orange and red colours also represent autumn very nicely. It is autumn outside and I would take you out to show you the real world colours, except it's raining. And it's been raining for weeks, it'll probably keep raining for many more, which is very disappointing as a wildlife photographer. But today I'm going to be telling you how to improve your wildlife photos using five creative techniques. Now I've been doing wildlife photography now for six years, so loads of time, and the majority of the photos we take as wildlife photographers are portraits. However, after a certain amount of time, portraits start to get a bit old and you've got plenty of them. So you want to try and bring out something new in the photos, do something more creative. So these five tips are going to help you to make your wildlife photography more creative and hence allow you to get better wildlife photos. So tip number one is to use different equipment. And by this, the main thing I'm talking about is lenses. Now, as a photographer, we all have our cameras, the cameras that we are used to and we use out in the field day in, day out. I have my cameras, the Canon 7D Mark II and Canon 250D. I'm sure you do, whether you're a Canon, Nikon, Pentax, Olympus, whatever type of camera user you are. Now, the cameras can alter photos, but generally speaking, the lenses have more of an impact. With wildlife photography, we often use a super zoom lens like this. Now, this is the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens and allows me to zoom in to any wildlife, no matter how far away it is. This is great for taking portraits and the like, but it means your photos do all end up similar and they are just portraits. So if you want to restylize your photos, do something different, then using a wide angle lens such as this, now this is the Canon 50 millimeter lens. It's not that wide. It is good for portraits, it is slightly zoomed in, but for wildlife photography, it's wide enough. If it's not wide enough, you could use the Canon 24 millimeter that I'm using to film now. And this wide perspective gives you a totally different looking image. You get lots of the background while being able to be quite close to the wildlife. Now, don't get me wrong, this comes with challenges because to use a wide angle lens, you need to be close to the wildlife. And I know from experience, it's very difficult to get close to wildlife. But a time you can use this is if you can set the camera up and do remote shooting. Now the Canon 250D, which I'm using to film this video, you can connect to your phone using an app. And this means that I can set the camera up with a wide angle. I can walk away and take photos without disturbing the wildlife too much. That is a great way to do it. Wildlife trail cameras, any camera where you don't have to get too close to the wildlife. Alternatively, you go to a zoo or a farm or you find a place where the wildlife is used to you and you can get close to the wildlife. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's raining. The weather conditions are not ideal for wildlife photography, but we can use this to our advantage. We can use it to make more creative photos. When it's raining, you can get rain streaks in the photos. If it's snowing, you can do the same, but with larger snow streaks. And these can really add character to the photo. If you have a bird sitting in a moody environment with rain streaks going down, especially if you have fancy lighting, but we'll get to that later. These can really bring out a subject and make your photo stand out from the normal portrait photo. Now, before I encourage you to go out in the rain with your equipment, you do have to be careful if it's not waterproof. Mine is water resistant, meaning it can take a little bit, but even I don't go out in heavy rain because you don't want your equipment getting damaged. No photo is worth that because then you won't have a camera to take more photos. My next tip for taking better and more creative wildlife photos is to use lighting. Now, as a wildlife photographer, you go out into the field where you have very little control of the lighting. You're relying on the sun, and sometimes you can use bodies of water to reflect light, but generally speaking, you have no control, except you can control your angle to the wildlife, which can help you move the lighting around, even though you're not moving the lighting. Now, this could be by putting the sun behind a subject, or it could be by waiting by a pond so that light is reflected up underneath the flying bird. There is hundreds of examples, but I'm gonna talk about a few cool photo ideas that you can use by changing the lighting. And that is backlighting. Backlighting is a great one for giving a glow to the outside of an animal. Contrast photos where you have light on one side of the animal and not the other and create drama through the different lighting conditions. Or you can use light to illuminate steam coming out of a singing bird's mouth early in the morning. 
Now, as I mentioned when I was talking about lighting, you can use water bodies to reflect light, but you can also use water bodies to reflect the subject itself. If you have totally still water, you can get really clear reflections, and if you have ripply water, you can get distorted reflections. Either way, you can use reflections to create cooler images. If you have a bird or an animal on the edge of a water body, or you have a swan in the middle of a pond, you can get really cool photos just using the reflection because it adds something else to the image. It's not just a portrait of the animal. And my last tip applies to fast moving subjects such as a flying bird or a running mammal. And this one is quite difficult. So if you want to use this technique, you may have to practice it a few times, but it is using a slower shutter speed on a moving subject. Say you have a bird flying across the sky or you have a fox running across a field. Using a slower shutter speed and moving the camera so the perspective remains the same on the subject means that you can get awesome action photos as the subject moves across the screen but the background will blur out. Now this technique is definitely the hardest we've talked about today and will take a lot of practice but that's photography. So go out there and do some wildlife photography and try and use these techniques. They will definitely improve your photography. If you've enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.